Look away now if you don't want to see the weekly. Biker Cycle is officially entering the next uh, Catface Rally Club on uh, while driving the Triwheeler. Fucking hell, this car is heavy. That is not good for me. Not sure when the next cat face is, but I'm going to try and enter it, even if I enter on my own. I entered the first and last round of last seasons, I'm pretty sure. Oh no, I entered just the last round. I entered the first of one season and then the last of another. I took a big break from gaming during the middle of last year. Which might happen again this year, I'm not sure. I am going to be knackered this weekend, though. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to survive this weekend. Some people are like, oh my god, I'm going out partying, I'm hitting it hard, I'm like... I'm gonna sleep Friday. I'm not going, not going bike riding Friday night. Although I could, I probably should, but I'm not. Um, but then Saturday is 100k. <laughs> Fuck. Is the plan at least. So, which also means I need to remember to take my lock either tomorrow or Friday and go to Aldi and get sweets. Yeah, there's people at my work that are like, yeah, I'm going out partying Friday. Oh, it's going to be sick. I don't know how I'm going to survive. I'm going to get smashed. I'm like, yeah, you do that. I'll be up at like 7 o'clock going, what do I do? <laughs> Usually watch midweek cyclocross races during the winter, but during the summer it's a bit difficult because there's no midweek cyclocross going on. There's no midweek anything goes on in uh, well this road race. Road race is shit and boring and long. Cyclocross you can like you don't watch the highlights of cyclocross because the highlights are an hour long and the race is an hour long, <laughs> so you might as well just watch the race and then ignore the interviews or watch the interview as I usually do watch the interviews as clips after like, I don't need to watch every interview I'll just watch the ones that look interesting from the people I want to know what happened to IMSA what's IMSA I know it's motorsport but which one is it but also, it's what do I do between the 7 o'clock that I wake up at and the 8.30 that I need to leave the house to go cycling. Oh, it's... Um, endurance. Ah, American Weck. If it's American, do they still get to do the running to the cars thing? Or did the FIA manage to ban that one? I do love how... Uh, it's American WEC, the World Endurance Championship. Which at least we've got that, because America has the World Series of Baseball. But then Cyclocross has the World Cup, which I saw a picture of... Um, it was a graphic of the continent's people racing in um, Benidorm, they were at last week. Winter Sport. Snowing in Belgium the day before, one guy racing, came fourth in the Benidorm, where it was dusty and dry and people were on slick tyres. Uh, yeah, there was like, it was everyone's from Europe, there's like 10 people from North America, nobody from South America, nobody from Asia, nobody from Australia, nobody from uh, Asian Russia. It, it's like, yeah. Cyclocross is very European. 
and a couple of Americans do it. And there were calls when it was literally for two years after COVID. Um, well, actually before COVID even, there were calls because in the 2019-20 season, the, the 2020 season of Cyclocross wasn't cancelled due to COVID because it finishes in February, so it was kind of just before that. But um, it was literally two races in the US, everything else was Belgium and the Netherlands. And pretty much it was just Belgium. 50% of the races in the season are Belgium. Mountain biking is kind of getting there. But they have less races during the season. Oh yeah. I mean, well, people get pissed off at the World... That series, but the World Tour literally is European entirely. Like, there are no World Tour races. But that is more about organisers not wanting to get involved. Whereas the World Cup is more about the UCI people who are organising it being very happy with uh, the races oh, wait, uh, very happy with the amount of races and not wanting to lose them and not wanting to go to new places with a full calendar whereas the road racing season can kind of just accommodate more because it's not because the world tour of cycling isn't a you have like there's no competition it's not like the world championship series or anything whereas the world cup of cyclocross you have to go to every race if you want to win the overall or like most of them you know it's points paying every round whereas the world tour includes everything world championship when well, no, actually world championships are just world championships they're not technically world tour uh but the tour de france so a three-week stage race all the way down to, I'm pretty sure Kronos Des Nations is actually a World Tour race officially. Anyway, there's some single day time trials in there. So you've got three week tours, grand tours, and you've got some single day time trials, and you've got some like 120 kilometer races. So 3,000 kilometers and 20, 120. Like, fuck. you got to race them races to stay in the World Tour and get the paid sponsorships. Because if you're in... Th the main thing with being in the World Tour, the reason teams want to do it, is because if you can say, we are in the World Tour to a sponsorship, what you're effectively saying, or in fact, what I think most outside of cycling industries, if you're going to a sponsor that's not a cycling business, and you want to say, we are in the World Tour. What you actually want to say is, we have a guaranteed spot to the Tour de France next year. Because that's what they care about. The non-cycling sponsorships. We have a guaranteed spot to the Tour de France and all the major races. Because we are World Tour. We have to get one to all the World Tour races. Therefore, we have a guaranteed spot. Your logo will be at the Tour de France will be at the Giro d'Italia, will be at the Vuelta a España, will be at Paris-Roubaix. Yeah, but that's the thing. It's not... To, to sponsors outside of cycling, cycling sponsors know it means the, that you're at the World Tour, what World Tour means. They know all the races, you know. They actually know what it... They're going to know what it means. They know... Okay, so you're here, you're here, you're here. But to... To a non-cycling sponsorship, especially for a title sponsor, you can say, we will be on the results sheet of every major bicycle race because if it's a major bike race, we have to get an invite. Now, there's a few races that are non-World Tour that a lot of World Tour riders turn up to, and they don't always get as many because the organisers of those tend to be trying... You can technically invite anyone with a minimum of a certain... I think it's a minimum of a certain number of non-World Tour teams. 
but they often give it to smaller and smaller teams. There was one last year who gave the maximum number of third cap teams a ride. There's a like, race that a load of the biggest World Tour pros, people have said, oh, why doesn't it go World Tour? And it's like, because it's got to prove itself for a few more years. It's just a great course. Can't remember what race it was. Single day race. Midweek. But yeah, they decided to give as many positions to the lower teams as possible to basically go get your sponsors out there as a rider get yourself up the road because everyone's watching this race because the big riders are in it it is interesting watching these things and you sometimes don't realize like for instance i didn't realize that for the longest time when i was a kid a team called cofidis still going now they are world tour now they weren't World Tour when I was a kid. The reason that I knew about them was because they were always invited to the Tour de France for being French. But they kind of know that they'll always get an invite. And it's the same thing with Caja Rual. are always going to get an invite to the Vuelta because they're Spanish. Um, Ilo Cometa, I think, will always get an invite to the uh, Giro d'Italia because they're Italian. Sponsorships do sometimes suck though, because like, what do you do if you just simply do not believe in a sponsor at all? Like, it's it's one thing to go into a team that you don't believe in the title sponsor of, but it's another thing for like, your nation's team, where you have to race for them, you don't get the choice, you know. If you want to race in Worlds, or in anything that uses the national team, you have to race with them. And there was a load of people who really didn't want to race with Worlds for Team GB with a great fucking shell, the oil company sticker on their arms. Quite frankly, I don't care. <laughs> I'd have turned up with some duct tape over it. Knowing that I would never race World Champs again, but I'd have been there with some duct tape. But British team's absolutely stupid sometimes. I mean, they stopped Bernard Kerr going uh, to Worlds one year. They had five people could go to Downhill Worlds. And they said, oh, no, we're not going to take you. They only took three. They're like, no, we're not going to take you. I was like, what? Why? I'll pay. <laughs> he was like, oh, I'll pay. All you need to do is give me a jersey because I have to race in your jersey. And they were like, nah. Right, cracking. That's uh, weekly done.